Hello and welcome to a new episode on what does this data say. I am Ajay Prakash. I continue the series on the crash of Air India 171. You'll have to excuse me for my voice today as I am having some throat issues, but the information was so important that I thought I should bring it out to you as early as possible. So thank you very much for bearing with me. It's been more than two weeks now since this uh, incident took place at Ahmedabad airport, but we are nowhere yet close to answering the question that why did Air India 171 crash? Now, as I say this, I just see a breaking news coming out of NDTV, which says the Air India crash probe report will come by next week, that is July 11th. And uh, this is a breaking story. Details will soon be added. So until the final report is out, we'll still have to keep seeing a lot of speculations going on on the Internet uh, on why did Air India 171 crash. This includes the theory that the pilot did not deploy the flats and slats. Uh, another one says inadequate length of runway was used, which resulted the aircraft not getting enough lift. Third one was, uh, which was said is that the pilot seat slipped back because this had happened earlier in 1787 Dreamliner to the theory which is uh, picking up pace is contaminated fuel. And the latest one in the list is that it could have been a software bug. And add to this the statement given by Minister of State Murli Dhar Mahol, who said that sabotage angle is also being probed in the Air India crash case. So whatever be the cause, one thing appears to be pretty certain among all the experts who have been talking about this crash on, uh, on the internet is that as a result, there was a dual engine failure at the time the aircraft was taking off. Now, in this episode today, I'm going to cover another case of a dual engine failure, which happened on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner several years ago. It was on January 17, 2019, and ANA Boeing 787 Dreamliner suffered a simultaneous dual engine failure on landing at Osaka airport. You can read the whole story on simpleflying.com. I have given the link at the bottom. And why this story did not catch the attention of people was that since no one was injured or the, there was no accident, so no one really cared about this incident. Now, whatever I'm going to tell you in this uh, program uh, should be seen in the backdrop that Boeing 787 Dreamliners have a long history of safety concerns. We all know very well about the whistleblowers. John Barnett, who had worked for Boeing, he had alleged that uh, Boeing had deliberately fitted substandard part to the aircraft. And uh, after retirement, he had commenced legal action against Boeing. And then in March 2024, from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound, he was found dead. And then another whistleblower, Sam Salepour, he's all over the internet. Uh, he has been giving a lot of interviews. And he had told in April 2024 that Boeing should ground every 787 Dreamliner jet worldwide. After warning, they are at risk of premature failure. He alleged that crews assembling the plane failed to properly fill tiny gaps when joining separately manufactured parts of the fuselage. So now let's come to the uh, dual engine failure incident. The aircraft in question is uh, the ANA Dreamliner. The registration number is JA825A. Now, this Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner was delivered to all Nippon Airways on February 7, 2014. It was the 148th Dreamliner to be, to be manufactured, and it came out of the Everett plant of Boeing. Now, this uh, Dreamliner to all Nippon Airways, it was delivered around the same time 
that the aircraft to Air India was given the registration number VTANB that had crashed in Ahmedabad. Now, uh, this uh, Air India Dreamliner uh, was the 26th aircraft to be manufactured and it also came out of the Everett plant. So it could be a mere co coincidence that uh, two aircraft which uh, were delivered in January 2014, both seem to have suffered. Well, one did suffer dual engine failure. The other one, we are only suspecting that it had a dual engine failure as well. Though plane spotters show the airframe status as stored for this aircraft, I think they need to correct their information on their website. If you look at Flight Radar 24, this aircraft has been flying all through. Before I describe the incident to you, uh, just a quick uh, explanation of some technical term that I'll use. TCMA, Thrust Control Malfunction Accommodation. This is a system on the Boeing 787 for detecting and correcting a thrust control malfunction in an aircraft. Another term that I may use uh, is related to the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. MCAS or Maneuvering Characteristics Aug Augmentation System. This is a flight control uh, system which was implemented. It had some flaws and later after the tragic crashes that um, 737 MAX had, it was corrected. The incident that I'm going to talk about now happened on January 17, 2019 with the flight NH-985 arriving from Tokyo, Haneda to Osaka Itami Airport. While landing on runway 32L, the pilots deployed the, the thrust reversers and both Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines simultaneously experienced a rollback and a shutdown. The aircraft was able to taxi to a stop and was later towed away with no injuries to the 109 passengers and nine crew members. Anna investigated the incident and determined that there was no engine failure, but rather a simultaneous rollback of both engines after landing. The airline concluded that the engines did not experience a failure, but rather a shutdown related to the thrust reversers and the aircraft's control systems. The incident prompted a review of the aircraft systems and operating procedures, particularly concerning the interaction between the thrust reversers and the engine control system. The incident highlighted a potential issue with the Boeing 787's thrust control malfunction accommodation, TCMA system, which is designed to manage engine performance during various phases of the flight. The investigation focused on how this system might have interacted with the thrust reversers during the landing sequence, while the exact cause of engine shutdown was not definitely identified and this has to be noted the incident led to a review of the software and operating procedures related to engine control during landing so between the anna dreamliner and the air india flight 171 what are the commonalities in both cases there appears to be a dual engine failure. You can call it with whatever name. It is a rollback, shutdown or whatever. The fact remains in one case it has been shown that it happened. In Air India's case, we are still speculating that probably there was a dual engine failure. In both cases, this happened on the runway. If the aircraft was on the ground. In one case, it was about to take off. In the other case, it had just landed. And what remained disturbing is that the cause of this uh, shutdown of the engines was never really established by Boeing. I will now talk about a very important interview given by Mary Schiavo to the Sunday Guardian a few days ago. The title reads, Boeing 787 software may have caused the Air India crash. She says 
that uh, Air India crash may involve Boeing 787's software trigger engine thrust rollback malfunction. Mary Schiavo earlier served as Inspector General of United States Department of Transportation and now is a veteran aviation attorney with Motley Rice. I'll just read out a couple of answers that she had given to some very important questions. The full article is easily, uh, you can find it on the internet uh, for those of you who wish to read further. The first question asked was, can you please elaborate on which Boeing 787 system are known to rely on computer input? To this, uh, she answered, there are several systems that rely on these and similar computer inputs, but in this case, I suspect the TCMA, the Thrust Control Malfunction Accommodation. This computer senses when the aircraft is on the ground and when the throttles are supposed to be idle. The TCMA will then instruct another system called the FADAC, Full Authority Digital Engine Control, which controls all aspects of an aircraft's engine performance. The FADAC automatically adjust engine settings to optimize performance. The next question is very important. In 2019, the incident involving Japan's Anna, you referenced, what was the root cause of dual engine rollback? And was it formally acknowledged as a software design flaw by Boeing or regulators? Now, she says this uh, answer is not very apparent. Yes, as described above, there was an investigation by US NTSB and corrective action was ordered on 787s. And just observe her answer to this question. Do you see parallels in how Boeing handled disclosure and remediation of MCAS issue, which the US Department of Justice found they tried to hide, Boeing tried to hide the Boeing 737 MAX disaster and how they may have approached software-based risk for the 787 fleet. She says there may be a parallel. After the 2019 NANA incident, warning and requirements for inspection and repair were issued. However, the world's attention was on 737 MAX 8 MCAS disasters. While that is no excuse, those Boeing inspection and repair protocol should have been thorough and sufficiently robust to eliminate the problem. All 787 should have been inspected and the repair and software updates completed. Inspection and repairs as instructed by Boeing would have been up to each operator and maintenance operation to ensure completion. So let me try to just summarize what we have learned so far. In 2019, a Boeing 787 aircraft lands in Osaka and while upon landing, both its uh, Rolls-Royce Trent engines automatically shut down. They were unable to restart the engines. The aircraft had to be towed back to the parking bay. Now, this aircraft was of the same vintage as the one from of Air India, which went down in Ahmedabad two weeks ago. Boeing is known to hide uh, flaws in its uh, aircraft. And this is what happened for the 737 MAX when two aircraft uh, met with uh, disaster. Boeing found that there was a software error in their MCAS system. So what she says is the entire attention of Boeing went to fixing the MCAS in Boeing 737 MAX and no one really looked into the causes of the 787 engine shutdown. Each and every security or safety incident in aircraft is followed very diligently by the FAA in US through NTSB. Whenever they find a snag or a bug, they issue an airworthiness directive to the airline. These are legally enforceable rules issued by FAA 
or other relevant aviation authorities to correct unsafe condition. In short, these are called ADs. For the Anna Boeing 787, we are still unable to locate the AD issued by uh, the FAA. There is some uh, conjecture that an AD has been issued in 2024. I have not been able to locate that yet. But if it was issued in 2024, that means that for five years, Boeing did nothing to rectify this fault on the Dreamliner. And secondly, if you were to believe Mary Schiavo, she says it was left to the airlines to do the software update. Now, we are not, uh, we don't really know whether Air India knew about it, they were told to do the software update, or whether they did it at all. And not only there is enough evidence to show that Boeing did not work on rectification for many years, this ANA incident of 2019 is not even listed on the ANA website. If you go to this website and look at the uh, list of aircraft accidents and serious incidents and you select 2019, there is no mention of this uh, Anna Boeing 787 incident. There's another incident listed of another Anna Dreamliner, which I'll talk about some other day, which was also serious but was not involving the engines. I think now it's best for all of us to wait for the incident report, which uh, we hope will come out on time in on July 11th. Thank you very much for watching.